Wait, so here we are guys. Uh, we just uh, finished milking the goats today and then I came in and told you about my dream. <laughs> why, is your, um, why is your voice cracking when you say goats? Did that wasn't my somebody? voice, that was the microphone. <laughs> no, it, it peaked out. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hear the microphone, so I know it's you. Uh, so well, what's... The goat oh, I love the goats. Oh. I, I love the goats. They're beautiful. At what? And the, I have one in particular. There's a couple in particular. The mother of the babies, Lily. L Lily, I love her. She's just. I just feel so. I don't know. Connected to her. And then, then um, the babies, specifically Big Brother, who was the one who they castrated. So he's not Big Brother anymore. The other brother is now bigger than him. Yeah, he's growing bigger up. Yeah, he's. Um. His whole face How is old changing. are they now? Uh, like four months? Four months old, yeah. And they're just... And, and B Big Brother was just... He just sat with his little face in my hand as I just kind of rubbed his little cheeks. Oh, it was just... So cute. He has an underbite, and so they didn't yeah. want to breed him. So they castrate him so that they he'll taste better. Yeah. When and they that eat is, him. That is not going to... I will not be here for that. But that no, won't I happen mean, to They don't these. raise him. That's why... Yeah. I think that's why they... They do it as a I mean, have us take care of the goats is so they don't have to actually be friends with the goats when they're killing them. I think for me, I mean, I wouldn't, if I was going to, I don't know what, I don't know what they, if they eat, like I know they eat lamb, so baby goat would probably be good too. I mean, I would rather <laughs> eat it as it comes out and not have to deal with loving it, you know? But I probably would love it the first, I did love them the first second I saw them. They were f gorgeous. Yeah. They were gorgeous. I think we have pictures grown on them. Uh, so much. We have like pictures four months? on Facebook of them when they were first born. Did yeah, you and little videos as well. Oh, my God. I think so. Yeah, they're just... I was thinking about today, taking pictures of all the goats and naming them in Photoshop. Oh, okay. Yeah. And relating them to names of people in Boston. Can we take pictures of uh, like us together, like the three, the three, uh, like I don't know the if they're them in the middle, enough. one in the middle, and the, oh, they will. You give them food. <laughs> They'll do whatever you want. Yeah, their heads will be in the bucket. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> you have food here, right, in front of their face, and then you put our faces like this, and they'll be licking, and, and we'll be smiling. Have their tongues out. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> that's, that's what they do. That's bozo. That's what grandma does, Yeah, too. grandma does it, too. When yeah. she sees oats, her tongue comes out. Yeah, they all kind of remind us of people. They're really cute. So how does the experience of working with animals every day bring you closer to God? I don't, I guess I find that the closer I get to God, the more I'm impressed by everything I see. I got, we'll, we'll take a walk, Devin, and I'll go, oh, would you look at that flower? Oh, would you look at, I, I can't, I can't get over just Oh yeah, stuff. did you see that flower over by the house? The white one with the purple insides? No, is it? You didn't see it? It was no. all over the place. No, I it missed it. Cool. Oh, okay, I missed it. Is it still there? I think so, unless you guys cut it down or smashed it when you were cutting things. Oh, over things. there. Oh, yeah, yeah that's a uh, iris. Yeah, but that that's one, it was kind of like that one in California. Yeah. But it had this Yeah, the, it's an iris. inside purple Yeah, I saw them. Thing. I didn't take them down. I took a couple down, but not intentionally. And then I saw it bite a bug. You did? Did no, they eat? No, no I like those. That like would have been Venus cool. fly traps, those are cool. Uh, anyway, I think I see... I watch the um, animals, and I'm just in awe of just the beauty of them and, and their and their their consciousness. I guess I just go, oh, would you look at the ducks with their little heads sitting in their wings while they sleep? And we have one duck, oh, which we left it there. Yeah, I was thinking we can let her sit on the egg. No, we don't want baby ducks. I we do. want baby chickens. It's okay. <laughs> How long do you think it would take her for it? To I don't know. She'll be wandering around soon if she's of it okay and then we'll go get the eggs we just made a pond too for, for the ducks yeah this is something we do against basically our owners uh recommendations just a little one she doesn't want us to work she doesn't want us to make money doing things for the animals <laughs> it's like we work all the time we would just do 24 hours a day for stuff for the animals well, we're trying to make their lives better and yeah. she wants us to clean up junk that she has around the house well, she doesn't i wish she would that's another she's a hoarder a bit I mean I love her don't get me wrong she, she's awesome just she's, another type of animal yes like all of us 
<laughs> she is. I would awesome. take care of. She's an she's an impressive human being. There's no doubt. She's an interesting human being, and she probably listened to this, so I can't say too many bad things about her. <laughs> ha 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 ha. No, she probably won't. Well, We're she probably all animals. Won't. I don't know. All unique animals. Yeah. Oh, we you say I'm a cat. You're a cat. You're a dog. I'm definitely a dog. But I eat like a dog. You, and you eat, eat like, like a, a cat. Dog. And hmm. I don't eat like a cat. No, you kind of eat like a dog. I do. I eat like a well, dog. Well, you yeah. were just saying today that you didn't want to eat anxiously. Oh yeah, I, I don't want to do anything anxious. Like a dog would. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. And then be like, oh, where's my food? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm uh, I'm anxious about the fact that I don't understand how to live with irresponsible people. It's really hard for me to do it. Like, so in such close quarters. Yeah, but we're talking about animals. I know. Well, you said everybody's an animal, and now I'm now I'm moving over. You said, yeah. Ask so me if what everybody's an animal, I mean, we don't we don't uh, ask questions to the animals actually expecting response, do we? Hmm. I'm asking it to you though. Are you going to respond, or do I have to? What are you talking about? I don't know. I'm just talking to you about my. You asked me what my anxiety was, and you said we'll talk about it on the show. And now I'm starting. Well, there was food. What? Huh? You said, what are you so anxious okay, about? Okay, but we're on one subject here. Oh, do we have animals. to stay on one subject? Oh, no. I'll yeah, be in trouble. How do animals bring us closer to God? We're no. with animals. Just uh, thinking about how animals, you know, are totally different consciousness and just observing them. Where it seems like they don't know a whole lot, but they, I have this feeling that they just don't speak. Because like, they don't have vocal cords. No, I don't know if it's that much. They do speak. I I think they could if they tried, but I don't think they want to. Like that uh, well, no, Tao Te Ching, where it says, um, those who know, or those who don't know, speak. And those who speak, don't know. Well, I know that the babies do speak, because they Meh. say certain, and they say, and they go, Mama! Milk, mad. They do. They Meh. talk a lot. The other, the older ones don't talk that much at all. Help! Right. Help. It, 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 they do sound like they're saying words. So if they really could speak, I think they would. I don't think they need to. I think that they they exist on a certain plane of consciousness that's perfectly fine. You know for that them. movie? Uh, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Or yes. Whatever? Yeah. We just and saw the that. guy that didn't doesn't speak. The Indian. Or so they thought. Uh huh. He just stopped trying. Like, he just stopped responding, and nobody talked to him as if he was an animal. Well, they, they just kind of walked him around. He didn't care. He just wanted just to be. I guess I find him to be, if we're going to analyze that movie, he's yeah, so very the, the Christ character, really. So what about the animals? We're just walking around, and they just want to be. Yeah, that's what I said. And we're sitting here wanting to do. Yeah, that's true. And they're just like, oh, I'll walk wherever. Oh, we and we project all our uh, emotions all over them too. Like, oh, they're ha- unhappy. Oh, she's pissed off. Oh, he's angry, and we don't have any idea if that's true or not. Yeah, I noticed that when Dawn was kicking a little bit, it was like it was almost a communication thing, opposed to oh, with no doubt, no doubt. Opposed she's to actually, she's upset. She was letting you she know like something. She like drags her foot on the wood. Like, yeah. Just steps. Like, move along. It seems like she's just saying, move like, along. Come on, hurry up. Move uh. along. Just, <laughs> I want to eat my oats. I want you to milk me and let's get going. Let's but that kind moving. of, is that our yeah, projection our of it? Yeah, that's our interpretation. Yeah. Just like we do with the human beings. So, what's the difference with interpretation and projection? Nothing. Well, what would be if we can get specific on what, th- what the difference is? Well, I would think that projection is something that we are not aware of, and interpretation is something we're aware of. What we we purely say, um, that person meant this, and projection is I am saying this, and I'm showing this person to myself to yeah. say it to me. You know. I, I I when we interpret something, I feel that it goes through our emotions and our past history and our identity. Our filter of who we are in order to actually interpret like some cultures would take certain signs that we do or something as an offense opposed to welcoming um, like 
the peace sign in an, some other country is actually flipping people off. Yeah, it's England. Oh, it's, like it's that, done but differently. That's different. Yeah, no, peace sign is always peace. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff like and, that. And well, I mean, there's like LL Cool J. Cool J. He he holds the peace sign backwards. Uh, and what does that mean? Like so, I mean, I'm cool. Well, I mean, with England, they they hold they just go like the, that. They, yeah, they jog move, on. There's a movement. A jog on. Anyway, um, without the movement, I mean, could it be offensive to the English? The English. They know what a peace sign is. Because I remember... Is. They know what a peace sign some is. Some president... You have to really literally do it. I heard a story about some president where they... He went over to another country, of course, as they do, and he did some sign, like the peace sign, and they were all offended. Hmm. I and don't know. started throwing things at him. There's a lot... We used to... When I used to teach um, English as a second language in, in uh, New York, I had kids from, well, you know, all over the world in the class, and we'd go... We'd, we'd say, okay... Well, how do you? How does a chicken? Do you ever hear this one? Oh, yeah. How does a chicken sound? So we go cock a doodle doo, or that's a thing, and they go kuka kuka kuka. And how's the? How does a dog bark in Japan? It's like bow wow. We say bow wow or something. Roof roof. They go koo koo koo. It's like really funny. It's completely different. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, that's a really good dog sound, and there's no uh, no questioning what that is. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I guess the interpretation, but we're working on some, such a, such a deeper level of that, you know, projection. What do we, what did we say yesterday that I was like, what? That's deep. Who are we talking about? Uh, it must've been buried. Yeah. It was so deep. You were so deep. <laughs> yeah. It was so deep. No, I, um, <laughs> no, no, we're bringing it up if it comes up. Yep. I don't know, for the animals, as far as me, um, for me, as far as the animals, um, I, it's so amazing just seeing how they seem to be some sort of identity, and yet they seem like they're not at the same time. It's really trippy. I love when they stand still, and they're all in once, they stand completely still and look at you. All of them, at one point. Nobody's moving. They're all just looking. And they just stare at you. <laughs> and they're like, okay, and they're noticing, unless they're really hungry. That's like this. <laughs> yeah, they do. Except their eye, their eyeball, their uh, pupils are square. Yeah, they're, they're from Mars. They're, well, we, we know they're not from here, because we've heard that from a book. That goats have been imported <laughs> from another planet. Because it's in a book, it's real. Well, they have square pupils. I know, man. And horns. Yeah, well, I mean, even sheep don't even have square pupils. And everybody know thinks sheep are a lot like goats, but they're not. No, they're nothing like goats. They're goats? sheepish. <laughs> they are sheepish. They're goats are friendly. Yeah, goats are loving. They, they really come up are. and lean up against you. They do. They're so sweet. I love them. And I love the rabbits, too. The rabbits are funny. The rabbits yeah. like to be fed. Oh, well, something I realized with spiders, because there's these crab spiders around the house. <laughs> not in the house. We don't let them in. But we have a screen wall. Pretty much one of our rooms is a porch. And, uh, Out of the two rooms that we have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's why you can see in the video that we got a couch behind us and the bed in the corner here. <laughs> that's it. And then that, that wall behind us that's with the, the kitchen. necklaces on it. That's the refrigerator back there. That's a kitchen. And there's, a refrigerator. and there's my skim board. And if you look to my, I guess my right... It, there's a little bit of light. Where all that's that light the porch. is. That's yeah. the door. That's the door to the porch. Anyway, the spiders. I realized, you know, when when they have babies, they don't train their babies to make a web, and they don't they don't uh, teach them how to eat. They just feed them as they're tiny little in their eggs, or something. And then they go out into the world and they do the the webs the same. And they do they eat they eat the same and they survive the same and find almost a similar spot as their mom between trees and they know how to do it. Like they don't need training at all. I think it's because well well if we projected the world if if this idea projected the idea i think what we've done is we've just said 
okay, we don't want to deal with all that. <laughs> so, if you, I mean, yeah, if you think about it, it's like, what gave it the in- intelligence to know how to do that without any training? Like what you call, what it comes with you when you're born? Did the ideas, when, we, when the mad idea arrived... And the arrival of the mad idea and, and the creation of the world. Do you think it was just like there was nothing here and we were like la 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 looking around well, and we then we created this and then we created this and then we thought this and we you know, just you ever notice like what did what did they find recently? Some new animals. We've seen some new animals that we'd never even conceived of. How about that seahorse the other day in that movie? Yeah. Like in every when you're a kid, you watched all kind of. And I remember in elementary school, they'd always show movies, and it was the greatest day. We'd sit in the auditorium on the floor. We had this really nice air conditioned auditorium, and everybody'd sit on the um, on a floor, you know, a carpeted floor, and we'd all watch these great movies, and they were usually on animals or something, and they'd show the seahorse, and you, I, I can't, but like eighty five times I've seen seahorse things. This seahorse was not like nothing I'd ever con- seen before. Yeah. Like, it's like I made it up. It was like a tree. It was a underwater. tree seahorse. It was very bizarre. And how about that tree dangly? How about that strange fish thingy. we had never seen with the with its fins behind it? Like, it, oh yeah, that was weird too. Yeah, yeah, I watch these weird. things all the time. I watch the Discovery Channel. I watch you know all these, and then all of a sudden there's something new. Well, we must have been doing that. This whole time. So when did this tiny mad idea come into play? Now? Now? I mean, some would say that it happens when you're born, you know, and you appear into this world. You agreed to this tiny mad idea and then take part in it. Well, the mind, who knows? I have no idea. This is not comprehensible, I don't think. Or discussable, really. You gotta speak up or be closer. This is not. Mic. This is not comprehensible or discussable, really. I don't think there's any real answer to this in our minds. No well, way. Well, not when it involves linear time. Right. Wow. Um, so, the only way to say that it actually is happening right now is the same as saying as it happened then, because there is no linear time. So if I'm saying it happened two days ago, or five years ago, or even 50 years ago, I'm saying that it happened now, because that linear time is just an aspect of memory, which is a division of what you have thought of. Okay. So like what you're thinking now. Oh, right, now Now I had to think about, now, uh, what? What you think of now, of you as a child happens now but you divided it up in your mind to believe it happened then because if you were all of that now you would be much different than your identity is now it's like what you have accepted or agreed about yourself to be Zoe is what you have accepted in your memories to define who you are like you allowed it to be in your memories. This is why the happy dreamer only has, has happy, happy memories. memories because. <clears throat> what is going on? Are you I going crack all the puberty? time. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing crack. I mean, I know you're oh. younger, but that's a little ridiculous. I'm just looking at myself. Like I've always cr- cracked my voice. Look how, good, look how good I look for 50. I don't have a wrinkle in this picture. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So, hey, Miss ADD, yeah, what were we talking yeah. about? Well, we were talking about memory and how it works. And, oh, yeah. And, yeah, the happy dreamer. Why? Oh, so you didn't know what we were talking about? Oh, I distracted no, I you. Oh, okay. Just, the happy dreamer yeah. only is happy help dreams you concentrate. because they only remember the happy thoughts of the past. If well, and literally mostly. the memories that you have, you think they're built in stone. Like you think you can't change your memories. You think you have memories that are set in stone. They are what they are. You can't change them. Right. And that's why your identity seems to be set in stone and you can't change it. Right. But your memories are made up now. Just like a story is made up now. (laughs) (laughs) A little snitch configuration. (laughs) Tell them about that. That's funny. No, that's stupid. It's cute, though. All right, go ahead. 
It knows I'm using a fake license. <laughs> it doesn't involve anything. Anyway, <coughs> so this is really deep, and you're distracted and not trying to uh, avoid the whole situation. I, okay. we, I understand it. We you're don't, talking about everything. About this, it before. You don't need to I'm sorry. point out I'm anything on there because we're on okay. one conversation. Sorry. So the reason you think your identity, and I'm talking to you specifically, Zoe. Okay. So I should pay attention? Yes. Okay. The reason you think your identity is very concentrated and very set in stone that you can't get out of it is because you think your memories are also. That you can't get out of your memories. Right. My history is set, and this is why I am the way I am, as opposed to that may not even be true. That may not even be a real memory. That may in yeah, that memory let that go. No, is not a real memory. Okay. It never actually happened. Even ten minutes ago, never actually happened. Because all of it's the illusion. This recording, as would be proof that it happened, is not even proof that it happened. Because you look at it, and you manifest it as you look back at it. Or look at it in the moment. You're not yeah. looking back at anything, are you? No. Because there's only now. So as your dreams, you know, Whoa. or wow. your, your childhood memories, you know, your trauma or something that you are using to define your personality or you make decisions about it every day and you're like, oh, I, I don't feel th this is right because, you know, my dad beat me or whatever. Just making up shit. That's all it is. It's making up shit. We are every day in every moment making up who we want to be by who we think we were well we, we, we've had that experience a couple of times well, I mean with, with me having a, well no I meant like specifically where this subject matter came up where we discussed it in this way yeah and uh, so I mean yeah. w you can see it with your family that we have different memories of right. our family then our family has a different memory of right. us and what happened exactly if you you know maybe make it a practice today you can go talk to your families and talk about some memories just uh, reimmerse re what's the word reminisce reminisce uh with some memories and you can see that you know whose fault it was or <laughs> who did who what to who uh, is actually different. Well, yesterday I was discussing my uh, my relationship with my husband, with him, and uh, currently he's he's still husband. Then, my so. currently still husband, and um, he he really is like completely, you know, sort of just not seeing it at all the way I saw it. You know, like even though he, you know, knows he did what he did, it's still just not... Was he the one delusional, or was it you? It was me, and I admitted it yesterday. It was very it was delusional and responsible for my so delusion. So, like, we, we make up these delusions even in the moment to make someone our enemy or to make them our friend. To keep the separation going. Now, here's that, that was the next question. Here we have these... Everybody has a different memory of our past, right? Yeah. Where's the oneness in that? So where's the one mind? Where's the separation first? In the thinking it's different, right? Okay, so what is the m oneness? In knowing it's not? Well, I mean, you can't know it's not okay. when it's not. Okay, where's the oneness? The oneness is, is in having a memory at all? So, so it's a realization that that which you thought was real is a delusion and then it's discarded as a delusion and you realize what is left is only the oneness yeah and that's why it seems so hard to do because everybody's holding on to these so-called memories of the past but they're really wow. just keeping themselves separate by saying I am what I was or seem to be and keeping the body as solid as possible. So you By can't do that. those things that you want to do. Like if the body the is not real. Show. Like we say, my body, or I am not a body, I am free. And I take that very literally. <laughs> I'm a poet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are a poet. That I, I, In this moment, I am not a body. 
And I'm not denying that I think I am a body by saying that, but I am believing every single word that it says. I am not a body, I am free. So if I am a body, or not a body, and I am free, then what is keeping me from realizing that? And that's what these memories are. In every moment, if I am not in the now, I am defining me. And the body is also a definition. That's all it is. It's like I literally, my sensation as a physical or as a, um, as feeling, well, as one of the senses, is a delusion of this idea. It's being filtered of this idea that I am born into a world. So there's a way of feeling the world without believing you were born in it. And that's where you go feeling beyond the body. Well, this is, and this, and this goes back to what you said about wanting to fly and move things with your mind. I mean, think about it. Yeah. The less solid you are, the less solid something else is. So then you're completely connected to it through electrical impulses or yeah. electrons or whatever, and that, and it would easily move in your with your mind because your mind has made it all up anyway. Well, it is all of that. Yeah. Cool. So God is in everything I see because God is in my mind. Right. So therefore, He's all around me, not all around me, but I am all around all of it. All of it. Right. Uh, so I mean, there's two things I want to say before I forget. Okay. Is uh, about my birth story. Okay. Right. So remind me to talk about that. Birth story. Birth story. Birth story. And then this, you don't have to write it down. How do you know I don't have to write it down? Just it's good birth, that I write it down. Uh, I'm. <laughs> whatever okay and then the other i already forgot about <laughs> so, i should have wrote it down <laughs> should have wrote that one down. Uh, i think it was well it had to do oh with yeah the head. the body well not the body but body. Uh, like we talked about this before where if i am asking god for something then i probably won't get it because I'm asking God for it. And God's too busy asking for it. Did you get that? Do it again. Because I'm just like trying to write stuff down. Say if I'm asking for something. If I'm asking for something from God. I won't get it. I won't get it. Because God's asking for it. Because God's asking for it. I myself am asking. Uh, and uh, God has everything anyway. Yeah. Right. He's too busy asking for it. So, myself, which seems to be separate, is just a belief, okay? But as I'm asking for something, I'm not going to get it because I'm asking for something. I am that which asks. I am that which gives. So, unless I give it to myself, I'm not going to get it. In other words, you're... You're projecting something out there, not projecting, oh, using another word, something that you don't have. Well, if I'm asking yeah. for it yeah. from God, mm -hmm. he's not going to give it because God is too busy asking for it from something else. <laughs> he has no time. <laughs> In no, I am God. I understand. That is asking I, for I it. I understand. I understand. So I'm asking it for it from myself. Right. And you're too busy asking to receive. So that's what humility is, or humble. The ego identity is to follow what I actually want by giving myself what I want and others. To give is to receive. So that's being... Like that that's brings it from separation into unity. One more level of that is neither. Give or receive? Don't do either. Don't expect either. Just be in the moment and accept what do you everything mean, that's expect? showing. Just don't expect Ex anything. Don't expect to give. Don't expect anything. Just show up and do the next exact thing that shows up. I mean, if like I'm for asking me, for someone uh, for something, for more of friend friendliness, then I'm I'm God saying there is no friendliness, no friendliness. here. Yeah, 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 I get it. And it, there won't be because I'm trying to find it. Right. But God is that which manifests right. it. And so God has to do it. 
So you asking for more friendship, for an example, or more love, is you saying, I, I should have. give more love. Right. That's what or, or I should just accept w exactly what's happening here and not accept or expect But that's expect the anything. guidance. Uh, yeah, that's true. Right. You accept that as it is. Absolutely. But we're talking about the mind training right. of re realization of God. We're not talking about on the hoo-ha of the right. heavens on earth. Okay. Well, no. What, I, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is that I believe that if you're not asking, right, if you're not trying to get something, mm -hmm. the next prompt would always be to give. It's like it, you wouldn't have to, that's what they talk about, not doing anything. But you're well, talking about you and another. I'm just talking about in reality. I'm talking about what I'm in the process of doing. You just, you talked about you and another. You said, if you want more friendship, or and I'm doing the same thing. So I'm if you want more way. friendship, you really are the other. Right. Who is not giving it. So you give so it So you yourself. give it, and you get it at the same time. Never want it. Always give it. Well, it's the same thing. Exactly. It's the, you're not I doing it to get it. I love when we talk about it. the exact same thing, and then we just keep doing it. You're just it saying it in different things, different <laughs> words. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the other thing That's I want to talk about with, was yeah. the birth story. Right, the birth story. My my mom always told me, and I feel like she said it all the time, and I never really understood why. Like she said, even from the beginning, I wanted to come out differently. And she would tell me how I was coming out breech, and I had to be, uh, she had to get a C-section, and I was the biggest baby and all this stuff. You're she would tell me the story. Likely. Yeah, probably. <laughs> anyway, um, look at the camera. Hi, camera. Sorry, I got my foot behind you. La, la. Why do people tell you the stories that you don't remember? So that so it could be established in your mind who you think yeah. you are. How did you get into this world? You know, as far as me personally. How did I get into this world? I would not remember unless somebody told me. And now all I have is a perception of a story oh, that was apparently told to me. Right. Right. That's frightening. So it, did it ever happen? Or was it a story of a story? That seems to now be a story of a story of a story. That now I believe that actually relates to me. And somehow I know where that place is and... And all these things where Devin appeared. That's all excuses to be me. That's all excuses to make the body real. These little things subconsciously in every decision I make exist. That it is real. And I am too. And the story can change. Like, you know, um, with with the, the example of your dad... And how like you you saw it, you saw your dad a certain way and mm. you know that towards you because well you'd said your 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 form of creative creativity was destroying stuff so here he is you're you're his seventh child and the seventh child goes around taking hammers and breaking them on in, into cement or whatever and that was just the way you expressed yourself and of course he was like yeah I was Don't talking about. That. I was talking about how I like to get hammers. <laughs> oh, I did. I was still in Ohio, so it was before I was nine or something. And I like to take hammers and use the back of them to s make carvings and cracks in the cement <laughs> driveway. <laughs> Sometimes the side of the house, you know, he's got eight, the basement eight, foundation. He's got a full-time job, eight kids, a wife. And, and all I knew was... Devin, that I, he was being told not to do something. I was, they said, and you know, that relates to another thing. And you weren't punished. You weren't beaten. You well, weren't I was always complained about, like, my brother, about breaking things. Yeah. And I think I did it on purpose. Okay. Because I want to see how it worked. Sure. All and right, it was so cooler, separate. So we'll get to the, we'll get to the memory of you know this is who you are but then you, but the memory of who you thought your father was was this sort of like strict oh, yeah. kind of guy who didn't you know who had a meanwhile he was just this man who was doing his very best and very good job because and he's I just got, didn't understand I mean every one of your 
siblings are lovely, lovely people, you know, pretty much everyone is not in addiction. Pretty much everyone is taking care of others in great quantity as well. And they just, so. you know, and, and you who want to help the world, you know, and they, they just did such a great job. So what is this process that we're going through, like with this? And as far as I went through, um, translating who my father is. Right. And we're translating the memory that apparently was solid in my perceptions Has of it. Has changed completely. And that he was, you know, I'm actually a lot like him. And right. I'm not actually that bad. Once I get to know myself, well, then I get to know him. In the change, well, I can even say that like it started to change. We were, we were there for a couple of weeks, and I think you started seeing that when he, we were there. Like when I, I pointed out, like, look how good he is with the grandchildren once, like to you. I mm-hmm. said, well, look how loving and and yeah. patient he is with them. And he's like, well, and you said, well, he's different now. He's different now. And I was like, are you sure he's different now? Or that just maybe your perspective has changed and, you know, that you were different or you saw it differently. But anyway, since that point. So I, didn't, I was actually refusing to see the happy memories. And I want to. Because I was distracted by the others. I want to I take that a step further, and especially with your, you know, your theory and how you see it, is that. I watched you soften because we have like sort of our relationship can be very father child. He's my father and he sort of does that. There's there's yeah. this goes on and I I watched a softening from that point. Absolutely now that I look at it. A change in how you talk to me. I mean there's still like you're still a little but it's not the same. It's different. So that translating of the memories is a natural process that we all have to go through in order to be a happy dreamer. Yes. We need to relay it all to actually having happy memories. Yes. And that's changing of perception, which is the miracle. So we, every moment you're given an opportunity to see your perceptions in another and relay them to so-called memories that you are defining your identity with in every moment and using that to ch- change that, twist it, oh, maybe it's n- not as real as I thought. And then there's the judge and be judged. When you judge someone, like I was judging my father, I became my father and became very similar so that I can learn that my father wasn't that bad because I don't think of myself as that bad. Oh, and, and what happened yesterday with, uh, with Rick discussing the fact that I just kept saying... I'm taking responsibility for what happened with me. It it wasn't you who made me crazy. It was me who decided to be crazy around what was going on. I mean, we choose to do this. And then the memory of it is, you know, if I look really carefully at the whole thing, um, it was me who who made the scenes. He did this stuff, but I'm the one who made the scenes when he walked in the house. I'm the one who made all the turmoil. So... Do you think of past regression as maybe an important process in the awakening to the happy dream even? Just in this in, in, in this lifestyle or in, the, in past regression meaning past lives? Well, past memory just past lives. regression just of this, any sort of really. This. I mean past lives we don't even a lot of people use past lives to make up a story about a story. Right. Well, we we also don't want to like you know dwell on it. Did mommy treat me badly? We we I have know, to. That's, yeah. that's what I'm saying. Is like Do we need we to translate is, mommy treating me badly right, as right. in looking at myself than, psycholo- than regular normal psychology. Yeah. Instead of uh, pointing out, yes, you are justified in your victimization. Huge, a huge idea. Huge. I've never heard of it before. Have you? Have you ever uh, heard that sort of like past aggression, past discussion where we really look at it? That it was all a misunderstanding. A misunderstanding. Like the whole world is a misunderstanding. Yeah. <sighs> because if this like happy it. dreamer yeah. needs only happy dreams, then it has to be a misunderstanding if I'm in the happy dream already. So then we bring up stories and we look at stories and we reinterpret them in a different way. Yeah way like uh that i was the one always misunderstanding yep because everyone is innocent because if they're not innocent yeah i'm not innocent we discussed that too with lauren and her parents we said if because you had a tendency to say if 
and this is his uh, his wife yeah, yeah. also still married his wife and he felt you know in, 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 in the blame game that we all play which keeps us solider and solider yeah. uh, he said you know it was it was it's Lauren's parents fault that that we didn't make it or that it didn't work yeah. out and and we know that it's not it, we know that it's just a misinterpretation so sorry I mean yeah no. they come back to that yeah. where I was saying if I ask for it then God's asking for it and not giving it I just need to give it because that's God giving it then if I go back in my past memories and I use them so called memories as an opportunity for instead trying to be understood like they never understood me they didn't understand to understand them instead to understand them like St. Francis yeah right oh yeah and, that I, and then I can become them and realize that I I was the misunderstanding there I was misunderstanding that I was the center of the universe and that I could change it all just yeah. by simply deciding to understand them instead and, and the center of the universe is always we always think you know when someone says I'm the center of the universe it means like oh you will do what I want you will do what I no, not I no 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 I know but I'm saying like even in that perspective I I can only understand I can only go that way because I can't get if I perceive anybody outside of me to do anything I can only do what I can do from my perspective I can understand I can interpret it as innocence. You are the center of the universe that you are in. Right. I am the center of the universe that I perceive. Right. And the only way of salvation is within me because I have bound myself in it. And the circles all connect. If you look at the center of a, ner if you look at a point of Neutron, center yeah. and you have your, like, you know, uh, vibrations going outward, I mean, they're all interconnected. There's no separation. Yeah. And then, but but what happens is you come against a wall, which is misunderstanding, and misunderstanding. You just have to say, if I'm innocent, they're innocent. If I'm guilty, they're guilty. If they're guilty, I'm guilty. In all of our past events, every single one, every day, every moment. And then, if I went through the past and have all these happy memories now, then. How would I be in every moment? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, we can bring up the, the first thing that we discussed, and that was the breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> Steak and You eggs. were guilty for saying heavy. Heavy. Why Even was I guilty? Because I interpreted it as you were well, guilty, as you said something that I got offended. I didn't feel guilty. I felt guilty, so you became guilty. And then I... But I perceived... What? I perceived it. You perceived my guilty? I mean, I'm not guilty. No, you just saw I me. I perceived that what? you were talking about you, that it's a bad thing to be. Oh, yeah. But I didn't believe it. No, you didn't believe it. If I believed it, then I would agree with this idea of guilt in it. And then I would be going against my idea of happiness. Right. Right. I would be disagreeing with the happy dreamer. Right. Cool. And oh, and here's another thing. I just saw it. Remember I said and then I said to you, well, with every person in the world you'd look at it and say, with the exception of maybe one or two, mm -hmm. you'd say, Good. Oh, that was delicious. Whether it was good or not, you know, I happen to be a very good cook and he happens to be extremely spoiled when it comes to this. But he you know, that's cool. That's all I, I like doing that and I like doing it for everybody in my life. But here's the point. You're talking about me? Yeah, you. Oh, Did yeah. you forget? Um, but here's the point. The point is, is that in in saying that I said to every single person that there are, you know, that you'd say, yeah, good, 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 because the difference between every other person and me in this moment before the awakening is that you can still treat me like you can treat yourself without, you know, with, you know, or it, it really comes from my perspective, of course. I can still treat him like I don't so like yeah. myself, right? It, it's it's really about so you're you're my okay guilt, treating my yourself badly, but not others. 
And in fact, I see it, but I see it, and this is the twisty, weird, deep part of it. I don't see it coming from me. I project it out at you and watch you talk to everybody else in a beautiful yeah. way. Boom. You know what the other Boom. difference is? What? Between you and everyone else is none of them are here. <laughs> right. <laughs> or everyone's here, but we just well, don't see it. Well, everyone's here because you are. Right. Right. <laughs> and if you can find yourself, your actual true self, then you can find everyone. Right. So <laughs> this, you know, and 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 in this, you know, this relationship of Devin and I, we we really do have every conceivable idea of in the world what a relationship could be. In other words, um, Devin is my dad my son, my friend, my husband, my boyfriend, my uh my dog, Barbie my doll. cat, my Barbie doll, right? <laughs> and vice versa. And, and and really we we have we have worked on and guru. him more and guru, teacher <laughs> and uh, student and everything that we've we've been working on. <clears throat> you know, I've tried to go, no, this is what our relationship is or tried to like pinhole mm -hmm. it and Devin's like open it up open it up make it better this don't is not that it. Don't, don't define, define it. it because the definition keeps any defined relationship keeps you again solid in, in, in history history past this is what it looks like this is what it's going to be and for me in the beginning it was more like oh no that's scary yeah. I don't want to be oh that means you're not going to love me the way I need to be loved blah blah yeah. blah and yeah yeah. Okay, we need to wrap this oh, up a little bit. Oh, but I wanted to bring it back to the talking about animals for a real quick second. Okay. Um, about w something I would say about the animals is like I forget that they're not educated. And we talked about that. <laughs> and educated really is just saying I forget that they don't really keep memories. They don't. Yeah. Like a dog just has no idea that you're not coming home. There's stuff like that, right? Yeah, they're they're really in the now. Yeah, they are. <laughs> and so they're fine exactly as they are. They're happy. Right. That's the difference. But they do know you. They do have that kind of memory because they do know you. And so really, do I want to go up in spirituality <laughs> or do I want to go down in primal thinking? I don't think that. I think. Or that is there a difference? I think the consciousness is just... Mm, I think that it's pure consciousness without all the mind shit. That's what I think. Ooh. Just something to wrap your mind around. Wrap your pr prim primordial mind around. Goo. Mind primordial goo. <laughs> Ew. No, no, no. <laughs> no, you. You goo. Sue. Do. Okay, thank you guys for joining in. Thank you. It was a wonderful was a discussion good one. today. Yeah, that's good. We didn't even get to the lesson. That's good. No, we didn't get to the lesson. I got Every day's going to be different. Have a beautiful day, my friends. I'm tired. Today's the day. I was up at six. Realization is near. Living mm -hmm. in trust. <laughs>